Welcome back guys. On the last episode, we finished up the intercooler. In this episode, we're gonna do charge piping. Whoa! We got our HD system. We'll be using that for each end of the charge piping to allow for that intercooler to float. The charge piping, sorry, the float. You don't want your intercooler floating. We'll be using our HD alignment tools to make sure that we capture those ferrules and that charge pipe right in this middle of its motion. We have some four inch tubing along with our classic air filter for the intake, two and a quarter inch tubing for the hot side, two and a half for the cold side. We've got some aluminum V-bands that are O-ringed in case we need it. All I have here is 90 degree and 45. We go from super tight radius all the way up to 15 degree bends. Last thing on the table are weld bunks, something that's often forgotten, but critical to the system for sensors, pressure takeoffs, vacuum sources, and such. Last piece of the puzzle is this 90 degree cast aluminum elbow. So last thing to do with the intercooler core, I took some basic measurements up to where the bolt hole is. I've drilled my holes out and now I'm cutting it out on a bandsaw. You're going to cut relief cuts all the way up to the profile. And then unfortunately we're gonna have to sand to the actual line. What I like to do is when I get close to the right shape, I'll clamp them together and then sand them together as two pieces so that regardless of the profile on one, it'll be the same on the other because I'm doing it at the same time. Check that out. Sweet action. We're like nice and flush all the way across here. And obviously I'm bolted in. This weld bead is getting in the way here. I'm gonna tune that one up a bit, get it back on the car. You know, we'll make it work. All right, so we're standing over the car and we're gonna start planning our system. Uh, we've got the termination point done, which is the intercooler core. You guys haven't seen that yet, check it out up here. So what are we up against here? We're making the whole charge tubing system, including the intake. So we'll be using our classic style four inch inlet air filter, probably mounting that somewhere in here. That shouldn't be too complicated. We'll save that to the end. To get the charge tubing going in the right direction, I'm gonna use one of our cast elbows cut in half, weld that onto our compressor housing here to start sending it down in this direction. And then it's gonna swoop out, come around out underneath the fender. On the cold side, there's a bit of massaging we have to do underneath there with the power steering lines, the AC lines as well, before we come back up to the throttle body. Then the last thing to be said is uh, we'll be throwing in some weld bungs for the IAT intake air temperature sensor on right before the throttle body. We're gonna be using HDs across the whole system. So the HD allows for both telescoping motion, rotation, and some angular dislocation. Simple O-ring seals, but we spent a lot of time getting that right. Hope you guys enjoy the process and let's get to cutting tubes. One big consideration with a charge system, the length of tubing that you're gonna be using. So looking at your envelope that you got to work within, try to use as little amount of tube path as you can. I'm gonna try and find a more efficient way of getting the intercooler, which I think I've figured out. I'm thinking I need a little more. This is a 45. Again, I'm just mocking things up, seeing where this is gonna end up right on the, the turbo housing. Aaron saying is measure once, cut twice, I think. The man knows what he's doing. He's the master. So what do you do with a brand new turbo, you may ask? Well, you bring it here to Vibrant, we're gonna cut it! As one Cardi B would say, money! Boom. Okay, so we got the turbo outlet cut and I've cut my cast elbow. I have a straight edge here and I'm gonna see if we're heading in the right direction. Once I weld this to the turbo housing, I'm gonna have an HD on the outlet here. 
So using a straight edge, I'm just going to put it tangent to the bend. It kind of sits there. And then that's going to give me the, an idea of the, where the tube trajectory is going. I have no, nothing to worry about up top. I'm only worried about where the bottom of the next bend is going to be. I'm going to grab some two and a half inch tubing here. This is larger than the tubing that I'll be using. So if it's touching something, then I know I have eighth of an inch more, um, which isn't much, but it's enough that if I give this clearance, I should be more than happy with that. So my goal is to come off this, send an angle down towards right in front of the front sway bar here in between the fan shroud and the front sway bar. So I'm gonna just straight shot it there. I'm gonna hold this up. I'm just going to position the tube so that it's tangent and I'm pretty happy with that. And I'm gonna put two marks. I'm only gonna be tacking things so I can always remove a tack and adjust accordingly my real tubing here now. I'm gonna line things back up and do my last sanity check. This is a 45, which will help me bend down around that sway bar. So I'm gonna line those marks up. I'm gonna hold the tube where I think it's gonna go. Just checking around any clearances. I can wiggle this around pretty good. So I think I'll be all right. I've got my two inch HD here. It's a real nice snug fit all in there. I'm actually going to try and weld it from the inside so that there's no weld on the outside. I think it'll look really slick and just give a really nice clean look to it. I think I'm just gonna send it. So I'm just gonna bring it up to the turbo here and double check that my marks are where I want them to be, like so, All right? I need to do a little bit of adjustment here. I think I'm gonna be like there, All right? So now that I can see that the alignment tool is straight across, to make sure that the turbo is in the same spot, I'm gonna grab my marker and I'm just gonna mark the center section to the, the turbine housing. Right now I can pull the turbine housing off. Careful not to drop it. Okay, you can see my marks and they'll correspond to the center section on the back side. I'm just gonna use my marks here to line up the, the outlet here. Something that's really important is to match up the IDs of the elbow to the elbow. The elbow to the elbow. The elbow to the outlet of the turbo here. These are pretty close to the same. There's very, maybe like a 32nd of a, of a lip here. Just making sure it's even everywhere. Just gonna rotate it in place. This cat, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Acetone takes off marker. FYI guys, don't do what I just did. So if it doesn't fit, we'll know why. All I'm trying to do here is align this HD so that it's nice and, I guess, parallel with the front of the car, but on an angle so that we have a good flow path while still considering where it needs to go. So I've clocked the turbo towards myself here and then use the elbow to send it back straight. So I really just want a straight shot down to the gap that I'm aiming for. Although I'm pretty close, I'm a bit of a perfectionist, you know, a little bit of effort now will pay dividends later, I feel. So we've hopped over to the cold side of the intake now. I've already cut the throttle body and deleted. We're doing a, the old 90s traction control delete. It's a butterfly valve that once the car detects slip, it will shut off airflow to the motor. Nowadays, it's done in a much more controlled manner through fuel cut or ignition cut. 
you can see how big this was and it used up a lot of real estate that we can now use for our blow off, which is going to live right here. The only modification I made to the HD flange is got rid of the tube recess for slip fitting a, a charge tube into it. That's not needed here because it's just gonna be a butt weld. It's not gonna be that lap weld that you typically see on the tube. So I'm just gonna have this HD flange sit on the throttle body just like that. I added a small chamfer to the inside on our lathe just to remotely port match it between the two so that there's not a big step there. Throughout this series, we're gonna talk about some important tools that you guys might wanna pick up. Something that's invaluable to a fabricator is a machinist rule. Uh, you can get them from McMaster Car or your local machine shop parts dealer. It's fantastic because you can measure right from the edge of the, the ruler. So I'm just gonna use this to center the flange all the way around. So I'm just checking you know, top and bottom, right and left. Before I tack weld all this, I've already removed a lot of the components of the throttle body. I don't wanna melt anything. I'll have to figure out something to keep the body of it cold while I'm doing a final pass on it. I don't wanna melt any seals that are still in it. Another thing to mention is this is an old casting. I've done my best to, when I put it through the bandsaw, I then squared it all up on the mill. It can be done on a sander, but then I've gone around the hole outside to clean up as much of the casting as I can because I really don't want to bring any contamination into that weld. Now I've got starts and ends to all of my boost tubes and we can start getting really heavy into it with the tubing. What I have here is a two by two and a half inch concentric reducer. I'm gonna cut this thing in half and that's gonna give me my two and a quarter to two and a half. So I'm just gonna bring my height gauge over here. This can be done just with a ruler. I'm gonna score my line all the way around this. Okay, so I'm gonna run over to the lathe and give it a chop. If you're not lucky like me and have a lathe to do this, one of the easiest ways is to just weld it to a 90 plate or a block of aluminum that can be chalked up so you can send it through the saw. There's a lot of different ways that we can cut this. Oh, well guys, turns out that don't take my recommendation doing this in the lathe key oversight, it's kind of hard to clamp a cone in the lathe. And we pancaked it. So I'm gonna have to figure something out. Instead of trying to mash things on the lathe, we're gonna go back to the bandsaw and we're gonna do it a real low tech way. Definitely don't do this if you're not comfortable with the equipment that you're using. Well, you gotta do it sometimes. I'm just using something underneath it to stop it from tilting, to make up that space on the other side. So I know that I need to cut on this side of the line because I want to keep the material on that side. All of my starts and stops are done. Now we can really get started on tubing. This is when I bust out my handy alignment tool and I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of how it works and why it's so beneficial to the fabricator. So the HD alignment ferrules and assembly is, supposed to, is designed to have a gap between ferrules so that it can translate in and out, it can rotate, as well as angular displacement. If you weld it so that they're butted up against each other, all it can do is rotate. It can't angular displace as much because it'll be in a bind. And like, and just as the same, if you weld it and it's not concentric, but at an angle with each other, it's going to cause a bind again. So that's why we developed the alignment tool to help with that. What the alignment tool does is captures the ferrule in the middle of the motion that was designed into the product. Okay, so it'll just link up like that. I'm just gonna close it and pop it into place just like that. I can still have that rotation that I need during fabrication, but I can tighten this down 
and it won't rotate anymore. As it leaves the clamp, the union sleeve, and the O-rings in the box protected because they are not needed during the process and we can scratch them, damage them, and cause further issues down the road. The alignment tool only interacts with parts of the ferrule that are not sealing surfaces. So again, we don't need to worry about damaging the internal groove. Now I've got my HD alignment up on the turbo housing, as well as down here on the intercooler, and I'm gonna start connecting pipe. Took a little step backwards here. My first cut on the elbow wasn't exactly where I wanted to go. And after I tacked it to the compressor housing, I just wasn't happy with where it was going. And this front section is really the most critical for clearances. So I need to make sure that it's perfect. Okay, so now this sits flush. I've got enough clearance. I've got a couple fingers here and I've got fingers here too. It's touching the shroud, but when I put the 45 degree bend in there, it's not actually gonna come this far. The bend's gonna start about here and it's gonna curve around. So I'm using this 45 to wrap around. I know I need to connect the two with a straight. So I'm just going to hold my ruler on here. I'm gonna hold the tube where it, I want it, close. So I'm looking at about four and a half. So I'm gonna cut it four and five eighths. So I'm gonna take my straight tubing here, give myself a mark at four and five eighths. For cutting aluminum, there's a few different things that we can do. One quick and easy one is picking up an, a big tube cutter from Home Depot or uh, your local hardware store. I'm gonna throw some tape on here. I don't have to be super particular with this because I know Speed Academy will be coating the tube, so otherwise I'd be a lot more meticulous with putting my bends down and not scratching them. I'm gonna cover up that mark that I just put down because I, now I know roughly where I need to place this tape and do a real gentle pass to begin with just to get make sure that I'm straight on it. A nice gentle score across the whole tube. And each turn around, we go a little tighter. All right, there we go. Pretty clean cut. I'll, I'll be touching it up on the belt sander anyways, and hopefully it goes right where I want it. Pretty happy with that. Make sure I have a nice flat edges. I've got clearance here, I've got a finger there. I've got a finger here, I've got a finger here, finger here. Just got a weighted block on it to help keep the flange stay flat. So in any fabrication that you're doing, you always want to make sure that your fit up is as good as it can be. It's pretty simple with just two straight cuts, but it is very important for when you go to finish weld it, your piping will move far less than it would if you had gaping holes. And it just makes everything easier and make things, makes things more consistent. Oh, touchdown. We just make happy accidents, right, Troy? That's right. I'm pretty happy with where this blank uh, ended up. Pretty, pretty happy with that. You know, 90 there, 90 back in, and then something kind of like that coming back out. For me, I always try to start where it's the most difficult, where there's the smallest amount of clearance, where there's the least amount of fudge factor. And out here, I can be really anywhere but in here, I really have to be accurate. So I'm gonna continue building from that side. Okay, I wanna show you guys another quick fab tip here for how to cut an elbow right on tangent with the end of a bend. So you take a straight edge and you line it up with the bend and you can see right here where the tubing leaves the straight edge is gonna be right where my tubing is tangent with that. So I'm just going to mark right where that is. I've just given myself a little spacer blocks here. You'd see here if I didn't have these blocks and this whole assembly translated this way, this bend would hit this. All right, so I'm a degree off. You know, I'll take it. I can, I can work with that. 
you can really start to see why this alignment tool is really handy because, you know, coming off on and off the car so many times. Okay, I'm done. I'll just connect it like that. <laughs> so I know I have almost five inches here. Probably only need an inch and a half clearance here. I can take this measurement, 4.456, and then minus what I want to get to. So call it inch and a half. All right, so that means we want to cut off four and an eighth. Internet, check my math. We list our leg lengths in our catalog. So I know that four inches in will be tangent with the end of that bend. It just starts to depart. So we know that this leg length is four inches. So I'm just gonna cut it four inches and we're gonna have a one inch gap because we are seven eighths and I wanted to cut it an eighth and we're gonna be left. So we're gonna have a one inch gap. So this time I've marked it on the inside of the bend so I don't have to use those spacers to cut it. Turbo noises. All right, I like it. What do you think, Troy? 45 here? Here. Probably there. Yeah? I think this looks cleaner. And this is the first tab I'm gonna run into. So we wanna shrink the charge tubing as much as we can to make it as short as possible. So we're like three and an eight. Three and an eight, then I want to stay an inch away. So we'll make the right cut. Everything but two bends done. And my plan of action here is I've cut this. I'm happy with the distance here from the tab. And now I'm going to tack it to this. The reason why I can just jump to tacking to that because this is has one axis of rotation through the alignment tool here. So I don't need to do any bending this way. I can fine tune exactly where the, the bend is gonna line up. If you're noticing that your tacks are cracking, it could be just because you're coming off the pedal too quickly. The material shrinks quicker than the, the tack is strong, so it just cracks. So what I'm doing here, guys, is I'm just trying to level the top of this one with the top of this one. You know, we're, we need to turn this up a little bit. Maybe something like that. You're gonna have to make compromise at some point. Not everything falls perfectly in place. This is one of those times that we are going to need to make a compromise. If this leg length was just a hair longer, I wouldn't need to make this compromise, but we're going to have to put a small extension on this leg to get it where we need to get it. When I cut this bend, I don't need the full 90, as you guys can see. I only need about that much of it. I have to cut it in the bend to use up some of that bend, but then make up that straight distance between the two. You know, the way the cookie crumbles sometime. I'm holding this bend flat against that bend, and then I'm transferring this line roughly about that. So now we have to find where this is tangent with part of this bend. So we're back at the saw and generally the saw is the part that's moving. In this instance, I'm gonna be moving the material through the blade. So if you are not going to be powder coating or coating or just painting or whatever the charge tubing when you're done, you're gonna want to either tape up your tubing or tape the bed of your, your saw. Again, I'm using this line as my reference to keep things straight. I'm just gonna cut ahead of where I think I need and then sand to it. This is a lot more challenging on stainless. Aluminum cuts very easily. All right, and this is when we're gonna find out if we got that angle right, because if it's the same measurement inside and out, an inch and seven eighths, so we're about an eighth of an inch off. On a tube like this, I've marked out two inches. I will put an X on the side that I don't want. If I cut on the wrong side of the line, I'd ruin both sides of it, and I'd have a piece that's too short, and my other piece wouldn't be long enough to cut again. You know, one of those things that, uh, you gotta mess up a few times before you learn that one, I guess, but. All right, ladies and gentlemen, patience pays off. I had to tune up this piece a little bit. It's not quite as straight anymore. It's very minutely shorter on one side, but nobody's gonna know any different. 
other than you guys watching. I'm pretty stoked about that, guys. One more thing, when you're working on the car welding, you want to always make sure that your battery's disconnected. When you're grounding, make sure you're grounding really close to where you're welding. The arc, if you're grounding like further away or down on the other side of the chassis, the electricity has to jump through the car. It can mess up bearings, it can mess up a lot of different stuff on the car that you won't even realize until later on. Much excitement. Before I go and donk it or something, I'm gonna add a few more security tacks. Cold side time. We've got the hot side all done, all fabbed up, just waiting to get finish welded. The game plan is to send the tube straight down through the gap in front of the pulley here, and then back out and underneath the power, uh, the AC lines are a little bit in the way, but we're gonna massage that a little later. Tilt box. These things are invaluable to a fabricator. They're fantastic little tools. They're angle finders. They're magnetic. You can get them at your local hardware store. If you can see here, this 90 degree is going to send the tubing back into the motor because this throttle body is at a bit of an angle. So I need to figure out at what point I need to cut this. I'm going to zero it. So I'm going to tilt this up. So I'm gonna start there. I think it's gonna end up at about 10. So I need to take 10 degrees out of this 90, and I'm gonna show you how. I've got my 90 degree bend here. I've got a bevel edge 90 degree uh, square. So I have my tilt box here. I'm gonna zero it to the table. We said that we needed to take about eight to 10 degrees out of this 90 degree bend. I'm gonna put the tilt box on the tube still read zero, and then I'm gonna tilt this tube, keeping it against the tilt box, get down to the table level, and I'm gonna line up where the, the tube touches the table, and I'm gonna take my marker and draw a line. Got my bend back here, let's check it. Put these two together, and we'll do a quick check fit. I'm like a centimeter away from the lower pulley. So it looks like I need to take out a little more to bring it more out to here. I think I've got a little bit of a rock there, so I'll just keep removing the material until I don't have that. Boom, right? So that's nice and flat. We can see that this is touching and so is that. You can see we got tons of room, almost exactly where I want it. I think I am going to uh, call that a win. Full beans. Ooh, that pipe is quite warm. All right, on to the next one. Oh yeah. I'm real happy with where that's coming out. So I'm gonna leave that there and I'm gonna start on this side and I'm gonna be coming out and around but at a bit of an angle to clear these AC lines, which actually I'm gonna go grab the old angle grinder and just give myself a little more clearancing here. This is what everybody wants to see me bust out of the toolbox because we're gonna get to clearancing. Grind these down and uh, just give myself that extra little bit of wiggle room and uh, let's get after it. Boom. That's the last piece. So yeah, the intake air temperature is gonna go on uh, the straight down there and then I gotta add the blow off and then uh, fab is complete minus the intake pipe. This is why I love our HD alignment tools. I've got the perfect gap here, perfect gap here with a little bit of wiggle room. And then my last weld is just held together. It's like helping hands.
I ended up doing this on the belt sander, taking off that ear, and then I took a file and took off the inside edge. I gotta put the blow off valve back on, and then I'll position it, and then I'll just trace the fish mouth, and then I'll hog it out with a plasma cutter, and then follow that up with a die grinder and file. Let's uh, figure out where we're gonna put this. Comment below what you guys think I should have done, whether I put it straight off and lives in the middle a bit, or rotate it down where it's a little hidden. All right, last piece of the puzzle for the cold side here is this intake air temperature bung, which we're be, we'll be placing down in the engine bay here. It's gotta be pretty close to the intake so that it gets an accurate reading of what's actually going into the motor. I think that's a, a good location for it. It's lower than the battery tray, which is important. Wow, that was a real uh, breeze, guys. <laughs> Tubing is done. We're gonna pull it off the car for the last time. I've got my marks and my uh, indications for where I need to put the blow-off valve and that intake bung. The real test is whether this actually comes off the car here. Wow, look at that. The other HD alignment tool maintains that perfect gap that we're looking for. Intake. Here we are, we got some four inch, 45 degree bend, real simple. It's just gonna come to the corner here. Just need a little bit of a cut. We're a little too long here. I'm gonna shorten this end. I'm actually gonna shorten this and weld it onto this end. You gotta do what you gotta do. I'm eyeballing it, three inches I need to take off this. Just translate this up and hold it over top of the turbo. And then I'll measure this distance, how much over the flange it is, and then I'll cut that off. I'm pretty sure Steve and Pete Steve and Pete, who's Steve? Dave and Pete are gonna try and source a stock air box that gets fed some cold air. <laughs> on the intake, we're gonna put a quick bead roll on the end so that the filter doesn't fall off. Not the craziest important thing to do as the hose clamp will do just enough job, but I'm gonna use this as an opportunity to show you a new up and coming product that we have. Everybody is well acquainted with our Vibrant Performance bead roller. Typically it has a handle, but that handle can get in the way, get in the way. So we developed this nice socket adapter screw. So how it works is it just fits on, you pull the old handle off, adapter on, little set screw there. Now you can use a ratchet on this puppy and keep ratcheting it along like this, opposed to having to hand crank it, hits the vise sometimes and it gets in the way. So you can use a drill, just don't send it through the moon. One of the most important things to do is you always wanna do this in stages, meaning you do a full revolution, tighten it down, full revolution, while maintaining firm pressure against the backing plate. Okay, we've gone one revolution, I'm gonna tighten it down again. Once you go once around, it tends to uh, follow its own groove. And something really important to say is you, you want to do this as early in the process as possible because if you have like, say, a big long intake and you're doing like a, a silicone joiner, it's going to be difficult to have this big long tube that you're trying to keep nice and flush butted up against the backing plate. We can see that nice profile that it did for us. So now it grabs on that, especially when I tighten down this hose clamp, that thing's not going anywhere.
We are uh, finished weld the tubes. I am going to now install the intake air temperature and then cut the blow off valve hole. So what I've done is I've just mocked this up on the tube. I've center punched it. I'm gonna start with a pilot hole and then I'm going to step that up to a half inch drill. As long as the drill does, isn't larger than the bung itself, you should be good. But I wanted to make sure that it's larger than the hole that's threaded so that I do have a little bit of leeway. Got my battery charged. Slow speeds is you never need to just go full bore. Now I'm gonna go hook up the plasma cutter and I'm going to uh, hog that puppy out. Just like Aaron had for the stainless tube, he made like a small insert. I'll do the same for this so that I don't get slag all over the inside. Everybody thinks that perfect welds just happen. Behind those welds, which are far from perfect, is a ton of practice welding. Uh, just setting up the machine, getting comfortable, just overall seat time is the only way you're ever going to be able to lay consistent beads. And I still have a long way to go, but every time I pick up the welder, I try and learn something from it. So I have this with me and I'm just gonna double check that the plasma cutter's set up to a, an appropriate amount. And you can see why we always put something on the inside to protect it. See that trash in there? That might just end up in the intercooler or elsewhere. So we want to try and prevent that as much as possible. That's why I've got this little sacrificial piece in there. I've got a nice hole here and I'll just take a die grinder and open it up a little bit. Again, with something like this, I hand cut this hole. I would definitely suggest using a hole saw. I just don't have one handy. That's the, the right ID. I'm gonna tack it on, tack this bung on, double check it in the car to make sure I like where it's at. Well, I must have done all right because the alignment tools still go on. Ooh. <laughs> Whatever. Your icrometer's not as good as mine. You'll never see it. All I gotta do is move it. Zero. <laughs> Close enough. Very last thing. I've got everything welded up. The place is a mess. Last thing I gotta do is put a 1 8 MPT bung on the hot side so that Pete and Dave have a pressure source. So all I'm gonna do is I mark the top side, I'm gonna put it on the back side of the tube just so that it's a little hidden. It doesn't really matter where it goes. Internet's probably gonna tell me different, but it's going here. So I'm drilling a pilot hole. Woo! Send it. Last thing to weld. Whoop, whoop. Well, I guess that's a wrap. Dave, you here to come pick up the car? I am, and I gotta say, wow, this is looking rather sexy. You've done a lot of very nice welds. I like your little devil horns here. It's a good look. Is that a style choice or is, oh, wait a minute, that's for mounting, isn't it? I apologize, everyone. The devil horn mounting look is, is awesome. And this whole jig, I mean, you gonna set this up, mass produce this for the people or what? You know it. We managed to put together a beautiful system here for you. You did. We're excited to deliver it. I'm excited to take delivery of it. Yeah. I'm excited to put it in the car and make a bunch of horsepower. And not just a bunch of horsepower, because that's what every super guy does, but to make a super responsive setup, isn't it? I mean, that's really what we've done here. That was the goal of everything, for sure. Well, and you'll see lots more of this over at Speed Academy's YouTube channel. I mean, these guys do nice work, but if you want to see us abuse their work, pressure test their work, make power with their work, do burnouts with their work, then go over there and check that out. It's, it's pretty good stuff. I might be biased, but I think we do all right. Listen. Well, where's the Spice Man? He's Aaron. here in spirit. Aaron, buddy. Thanks, but you know, you could have showed up. 
Well, let us know in the comments below what you want to see us build next. What would you want to see us build? Man, well, uh, let's see. I got to go with that FCRX7 personally because yeah. I, like, I like rotary engines. Hey, we do have plans for that over the winter. Yeah, okay. Sure well, do. I want to see it on the channel. Put your uh, fabrication where your mouth is, son.